Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Mike Vandersteen. And as you know, if you've been following these programs for a number of months, or frankly, for the last eight, nine years that we've held it, every month we try to focus on a different department and their roles and responsibilities. Today, we're pleased to have Greg Schnell with us, our Highway Commissioner. Thank Welcome, you. Greg. Thanks. Thanks. Good. Glad to be here. here. It's good to see you here instead of back in that plow like yeah. you do, especially of late. Yeah, it's been uh, one of those winters starting out so bad. It's not so bad as it was uh, 2007 and 8, but uh, right. still coming around. So. so far, so good. Greg is one of our newer department heads, although not so new anymore. How long have you been with us now? Three years. October 2nd was my start of my third year. So How the time flies. Oh, yeah. Well, today we're going to talk about the roles and responsibilities of the highway departments. And Greg, please set the stage by sharing a little bit about the primary responsibilities of the highway department. Obviously, we're in charge of the state highway maintenance. Um, we have our 450 miles of our own county trunks that we have to maintain. Plus, we also maintain and are responsible for 465 miles of township road. So uh, that requires everything from plowing the snow, cutting the grass, um, shouldering, patching, uh, maintaining the signs. We do bridge inspections for uh, townships. Uh, we do the minor bridge maintenance for those uh, also and on our county trunks. So it's, it's quite a responsibility and it's, a, it's everything from, from top to bottom. We have a well diversified group of people that, that are uh, efficient at what they do and, and do a very good job of it. You have an excellent staff and how many employees do you have at the highway department? We are budgeting for 108 for 2010. Uh, when I got here in 2006 we had 117. So we've been slowly going down in staff, but we're maintaining the service levels that we had in the past. Has that been through layoffs or through attrition, or how is it that you're decreasing your workforce a little bit? It's through attrition. Um, we had a, a, a relatively, our, right now we're to a position where over the next few years we'll be able to continue to reduce the way we are um, without having to dive into the layoffs, if you will, and uh, still be able to maintain a, a, a very good comfort level in our service that we've, we have been providing in the past. Recently, you had a great editorial in the Sheboygan Press about the work your staff did clearing the roads. I mean, winter's upon us. Folks are out there making that adjustment, and many of us think of it, there being four seasons in a year, but for the highway department, it's two. What are they, and, and how, why do you refer to always having two seasons if you're a highway department employee? The two seasons are construction and winter. It seems like uh, we, in, in Wisconsin, we're so compact on what we can do in a certain amount of, of time in the summer months. It just seems as soon as the weather breaks, the orange barrels go out, roads are closed, and we're into our, our, our summer activities, building, constructing, paving, doing all the things we need to do to maintain our, our level of service that we have. All of a sudden, time flies, and we're into November, and it's changing gears. We're mounting our, our, our graders and our trucks with the snow removal equipment and getting them ready to take, take, take care of the beast that we've been dealing with uh, every year at the same time comes winter. And it can be an expensive time of the year. Removing snow, especially on the, the number of miles you're responsible for, is no small feat. What's the investment the county has to make in both equipment and just budgetarily to, to do the job that you're responsible for? Obviously, we, there is no crystal ball of what winter could cost. Um, uh, it's Mother Nature dictates what the, what the cost is going to be and how much time you have to spend at it. But just in the equipment alone, um, a, a grader, a road grader with a wing, everything equipped on it, uh, costs us about $300,000. And we own 12 of those, obviously. They range in age from somewhere back in the 70s all the way up to, we recently purchased one in 2008. Um, we do have two new, three new trucks coming in 2010, and the larger trucks that we can use for our winter and summer operations has cost us about $210,000 a piece. So, as you can see, it adds up quite a bit. We have 40 trucks that go out in a snowstorm, so the numbers get up there. We need to have those trucks ready, able, and, and in working, good working condition. Over and above that, we have the materials that go along. We've seen a 27% increase in salt this year alone, $60 a ton for uh, a, a ton of salt where you look at asphalt is about forty dollars a ton that's something you can see stays there for many years the salt is gone in spring so the investment is wide and um, i think we spend nearly about uh, eight hundred thousand dollars a year just in salt alone and when you said a twenty seven percent increase in salt that's just in the last year or over the course of the last few that's over last year just over last year yep. and that's an interesting point you know we're always striving to hold the line on property taxes maintain the quality of the services we provide. Yet, 
yet another example of the challenges folks like Mike Vandersteen and the county board has. 27% increase in salt alone. We've seen significant increases in fuel and oil, many of the things associated that your department has to do. Um, it's, it's difficult to hold the line and, and not have an increase when you have those kind of challenges facing you. And on that note, you've also absorbed some hits from the state, have you not? We are taking about a $200,000 decrease in our 2010 winter or routine maintenance operations, and that's everything. That's included their uh, their mowing and litter pickup. So it's it's something that we're going to have to grapple with, and the whole state of Wisconsin is dealing with it. But I, I think we have a pretty good handle on how we're going to handle that. And obviously, there could be some, or we have seen some reductions in the service level as far as. Um, they aren't doing as much mowing and, and aesthetic type things like uh, cleaning up the garbage. That's, those are the least priority that the state has put on it. So they aren't going to um, do those types of activities or not as much of them as they had in the past. So you'll see us working on the safety things, the stuff that requires a priority, but we'll be backing off on the, on the least priority stuff. So millions of dollars of infrastructure and equipment, salt, fuel, all the things that go along with that. But for the average snowfall, you know, if it, if it snows Sunday, three to four inches, uh, what on average does that cost Sheboygan County, cost the taxpayers of this community to clean those roads up so Monday morning they're ready to go and folks can safely get to work? The true cost is hard to get your hands on. Um, and, and the reason I say it is that the, we look at a storm, everybody says we get the three to four inches and it stopped, the snow stopped. What we deal with on the end is trying to clean that up and then we all know what happens after the storm. We get real cold temperatures and we get wind. So the storm for us could, could drag on. But to answer your first question, the three to four inches, um, just looking at some numbers before I left, three to four inches would cost us anywhere between twenty-eight to $40,000 depending upon when it falls. If it falls on a weekend and we're dealing with all overtime, those get awful costly. If it happens during the week, we're in pretty good shape. We could run on a weekend sixty, seventy thousand dollars for a snowstorm very easy. And it depends upon how much salt is going to be used also. The colder the temperatures, we usually don't use as much salt. So there's a lot of things that go into it. And, and as I mentioned before, it's hard to put your finger on it because when I walked into the shop this morning, there were six trucks that were broke down from what we dealt with with that heavy wet snow. We had some plows and fr frames and stuff that were sprung and so there's when you want to get your fingers around what the storm cost, it's escalating into week after and week after and week after. A lot of factors come into play. That's correct. So Monday morning, everyone gets ready for work, or a lot of people certainly do, and they he head out the door, and you've had a significant snowfall on Sunday. How do you prioritize what areas you're going to address first? Our focus is state and county roads first. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we take care of 465 miles of township road also. What our focus is going to be is our state guys will go out and our county trunk, our tr county truck guys are going to go out about the same time. We start depending upon what the storm, when it came in, we may go out at 4 o'clock or if it's a, if it's a heavy, heavy snow throughout the evening, we may start at 3 o'clock so we can make our round. By the time we're done with that, uh, it gets to be about 7 o'clock. Now we have all of our main roads opened up, our state and our county roads opened up. Now we'll start getting into the townships and the villages that we, that we take care of. Now, we do have some additional pieces of equipment to fall back on um, that we could maybe send a grader in these townships a little bit earlier to help out and just open things up, but our priority is state and county first, and then we fall off into the, the lesser traveled roads or the ones with the lower ADT. Now, if there's a real dangerous intersection or approaching you know, some curve in the road or something like that, a town or county road, do you want people to be contacting you? Should they be contacting the Sheriff's Department if they want to bring that to someone's attention because of how dangerous it is? It would be, depend upon the time of it. During normal operating hours, you can call our office um, at seven, anywhere between 7 and 3.30. We do have staff there earlier than that, but depending upon where they're at in the building, they may not be able to answer the phone. Anytime outside of that, they can call the Sheriff's Department, and we do have staff that's on 24-hour 20, on call to take care of situations like that. Now, speaking of contacting your office, I know that it's never intended, but personally, I came home one evening and my, my mailbox was laying on the side of the, of the ditch, and I thought, doggone it, that plow driver you know, knocked it over, wasn't being careful. I later learned that actually it was never hit by the plow. The weight of the snow was so heavy that as the plow came by, it just smothered the mailbox and knocked it over. 
In any regards, from time to time that happens. It just happens, whether it's human error or just the weight of the snow. How do you want that handled? If someone has that happen to them, do they contact the, the uh, highway department or what, what's the process to get that addressed? They would call our department and then we would have our staff go out and take a look and investigate was it physically the plow that or the the truck that caused the damage and um, if it is that and we bust the post off we will replace that with a standard mailbox and a standard four by four post um, if it's the weight of the snow we would hope that it would be up to the individual property owner to take care of their own mailbox um, you know if i can offer any advice i know there we see a lot of the nice plastic ones with the plastic hood and it goes all the way down you know, it may take a little extra time, but you might want to take that in, in in the winter months and put up a little cheaper model because inevitably when that plastic gets cold and some snow hits it, there's a good potential of cracking and breaking. Those types we will not replace. If it's, if it's a specialized mailbox, we're going to offer you the same as we do everybody else. It's a standard mailbox, um, very inexpensive, and, and we pick them up just at Fleet Farm and Menard, just like everybody else could do. I know I went to Fleet Farm, and I think I replaced mine for five or six bucks. wasn't a big deal. I think I put in a, a stronger post to make sure it was good and secure. But uh, I also know that your drivers, even though every now and then you get a call from someone who's pretty upset, I think your drivers do a fantastic job. And folks, I don't think have any idea how challenging it is to traverse those roads and make sure you're not hitting those posts or uh, mailboxes or park cars or whatever it is, but especially when it's a whiteout. I think your your crew does a fantastic job. Well, thanks, and I share that also. The, um, there are a bunch of dedicated employees that are willing to give up their Christmas time with their families when the call comes, they, they go. Um, and as you said earlier, it's not, uh, it's not their intention to, to bust anybody's mailbox. There's a whole lot of things that can go in it. They may need, meet another car if it's a narrow piece of road or the other car might be over the center line. There's no other place to go and obviously you're going to take the path of least resistance and, and go that direction. So there's a lot of things that come into it and they don't do it intentionally. So, Last question before I turn it over to Mike. Speaking of safety, uh, you mentioned some tips there on mailboxes. What about people's driving out there when they see a plow, certain distances they maintain, what safety tips would you offer? Stay at least 200 feet back. When you're behind a snowplow, if you can't see the man up in your mirror, he can't see you. Um, so if, he, if you can keep your distance, give us enough time. We're out there trying to get everything cleaned up so everybody can get to work at a safe, uh, safe time. Allow yourself enough time to get there. You know, pay attention to uh, um, the weather and the road conditions. The media likes to uh, give you all kinds of tips as when the snow is going to come and when it's going to hit. Pay attention to those things and you know we're going to take care of things as fast as we possibly can. We just want to get everybody to work, school and, and to their activities at night just as safe as we possibly can. Take your time. Allow enough time to get to where you need to be. Very good. Thanks. Greg, in addition to plowing our, uh, our own uh, local roads and uh, in our state highway systems, uh, you do a lot of work for municipalities. Could you give us a little flavor of uh, the types of services you offer to our local municipalities? Sure. As I mentioned earlier, we take care of their maintenance, um, the shouldering, the mowing, the center striping. We do all that. Over and above, we can provide services such as paving a mile of road or overlaying a mile of road, reconstructing, um, putting in new culvert pipes. We have a, a wide range of equipment that can offer it a lot of services. Um, we can be there at the pick up a telephone to, to get there. It's not like you have to, um, municipalities can, can call the highway department and just say, we need this work done. That, that's a, a intergovernmental type thing that they can uh, control on, on their own. So um, we do some concrete work, as I mentioned earlier. Also, we, we do uh, bridge inspection and, and minor bridge repair. So we offer a lot of services. Really do. Um, what kind of priorities do you establish and, 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 and use that to set the roads or pick the roads you're going to work on each year? We have a system that was established by the uh, Wisconsin Department of Transportation called the Whistler system. It's a, it's a road rating system. And each spring we go and we rate, rate our roads um, from 10 being the best road you can have to 1 being the worst road you can have. And that's how we base our priorities. If we, if we see that these roads are, are starting to um, deteriorate, we know that we have to get them into our, our, our five-year plan as far as paving goes and what we need to fix up. Um, obviously, sometimes the rating doesn't, in, doesn't dictate, it may be a low rating, but we have to also look at um, 
the ADT, the uh, average daily traffic on the road. If it's a if it's a lower volume road and we have a higher volume road that that needs to be fixed up and maybe doesn't have as low a rating, but it still carries you know a lot more traffic, we may have to play with that a little bit and and put one off or do just some minor repairs and and limp it along um, if it doesn't need the, the drastic change right away. Now, to keep the roads up, Sheboygan County owns their own asphalt uh, plant. Where is that located, and, and how much asphalt do you produce each year? The plant is located out in Greenbush. Uh, we call it the Thackeray Pit, and it, we own a portion of that, um, that pit, and it's also owned by the Thackerays. Um, we, right now, pay royalty to them because our portion of the pit has, has seen its useful life. So our asphalt plant is actually stationed in a county pit, and the back side of that pit is, is owned by a private individual we pay royalty to. Um, our average year is about 65 to 75,000 tons of asphalt. Um, this year was down a little bit. We, we produced about 60,000 tons, um, and we had to also purchase another additional 10,000 tons with some funding that we received from the state. So um, along with that, we also have a crushing operation, and that crushing operation supports our asphalt plant by producing the aggregates that we need to, to produce our asphalt. And we normally uh, run about 200,000 tons of, of aggregate, crushed aggregate through there. Now that's, some of that goes into the road mix for the asphalt, and the other is used for the base for the, uh, our new reconstruction of, of roads. Okay, and, and what advantages do we get as a county operating our own asphalt plant and crushing operation? When you have your own operation, we, we go out every spring and, and bid our oil. So we're in control. We know how to establish and, and, and set our costs for the year. We roll in all the costs of what it takes to maintain um, the labor and the equipment that's out there. So we're in control of our own destiny. We are in control of our own cost. Um, when you establish that at the beginning of the year, you know where you're at and you can budget for that. Um, I've heard horror stories of um, individuals that didn't have an asphalt plant that uh, in the mid-year all of a sudden they had a huge swing like we had in 2008 with the oil cost. Um, they had had to add $15 a ton to the asphalt coming off the belt. So that took their paving program and diminished it for that year. It also is in, you're in control of your own schedule. Um, when we, in the past when we did have to purchase asphalt, we would call a day, day in advance to uh, tell them that we were coming. Well, they may have some other companies buying asphalt from them at the same time. So there's a possibility that you may have to wait. And when you have a wait and you have a paving chain parked out on a road, county trunk A, B, or C, and they're waiting for their materials, that can, becomes very ineffective and, cost, um, and not cost prohibitive. Okay. And then what other uh, type of surface treatments does your department do to keep the roads in good shape and well maintained? After we do a, a paving job, um, such as an overlay, uh, sometimes those overlays are uh, uh, inch and a half to two inches, we'll try to get as much life of that as out of it as we can. And that usually is between 10 and 15 years. From that point on, we'll do some crack filling, maintain the cracks, seal them off so there's no moisture is getting into the base, and then we'll do a seal coat. And we'll put on some fly ash, it's a black fly ash, we apply some oil first, we cover it. And then what it does is it seals off the, any, any minor, smaller cracks that we have and it provides another wear surface, and we'll get about five to seven years out of that before we have to do some pulverizing and paving. Okay, and how much of your budget each year goes towards road maintenance and the construction of roads? We, uh, we about $3 million is used for maintenance, and an additional $3 million is used for construction. Um, construction being uh, overlays, or if we're doing some, some concrete repair on some of the concrete pieces that we do have, like Taylor Drive, um, though, though that's a weak consider construction. Um, so out of that, about $1.5 million is used just for winter maintenance alone. So it's, you know, it, it's, it's hard to juggle and, and put a, a hard number on what uh, that maintenance dollar is, but it's, it's all encompassed in the budget as far as what our needs are going to be and, and where we're going to be providing the maintenance and the construction for that year. Greg, there's been some questions raised about uh, the highway department and private contractors and, and work that's done in different areas. Um, how do you look at that situation and, and how do you, you, you respond to that? Well, it, this has been coming up um, a lot of years, even prior to me being here in, in my past uh, employment at a, at a different highway department, it was the same scenario. Um, there's been a little bit more focus on it now, obviously, because of the downturn in, in the economy, which everybody's well aware of. 
um, in these conversations that we had, everybody is available to do construction type activities. But when you switch the season again and go back into your winter operations, there's not a lot of people that are geared up the way we are to provide winter maintenance, whether it be to the state, the county, or the townships. So in order to do that, the county in the past 100 plus years that's been providing these types of services has always supported having some type of construction activity so that their employees are supported throughout and there's a, there's a good swing, you're taking care of your winter, you're getting uh, dual applications out of some of the equipment such as the trucks, you can use them in the summer for hauling asphalt and, and, and gaining revenue from them there and you can also use them in the winter. So there's, there's a, I, to me, there's a perfect benefit to having that type of operation for a highway department and offer this type of service. With that, I'll turn it back to Adam for some more questions on our, uh, our construction projects. You did a lot in 2009. I know that you didn't uh, take as much gravel out of the pit as you, you did the prior year for overlay and things of that, but uh, County Trunk O was a major project for you. Touch on that a little bit, please. We, uh, at the beginning of the year in spring, we, we finished up what we had started in 2008. Um, that was the first phase of O from Taylor Drive out to I-43. We had to do the top layer of asphalt and also the, um, the landscaping, the restoration. So we got that completed. Um, we pulled off and did some stuff out for our county airport and we came back this fall and started from on old from 32 and started to work in towards the city. Our construction limits were from 32 and 68th Street. Um, this year with the weather that we had in October, we, we were, it was unfortunate we had to pull up a little short, but we did start the first or that phase of it. Um, that phase or the, the county trunk old construction will continue throughout this next coming summer also and hopefully by next fall we'll have a complete stretch from Taylor Drive all the way out to 32 with a nice piece of highway that uh, um, has is going to be beneficial for cars, bikes and walkers because we're, we're using some of the non-motorized funds to assist in, in providing some pedestrian type uh, uh, facilities. I've had received some nice compliments on the work you've done out there and I know folks are anxious to see that extended next year particularly as you said with the pedestrian the biking path there what is it 12 feet wide? 10 feet wide. 10, for this, for 10 feet surface, wide yep. and uh, real nice. Mike I think in fact you went out there didn't you and tried it out? Yeah it's very nice. And and the bike paths with our non-motorized program and of course you've had a a leadership role in that. That's really been a big emphasis the last few years. We still have other projects ahead of us, but uh, as you look at 2010 and beyond, where do you envision or wh where are you planning some further major construction projects, including some uh, extended bike trails? We, uh, the planning department is looking at, at, at refurbing the, uh, the old Plank Road Trail from Range Line Road out. Um, hopefully we'll be working on this, this coming summer also. Um, the um, County Trunk OK and EE intersection improvements should be happening this coming summer so that's going to be a, a bigger project for us and one that has uh, created a lot of issues over the years. Ever since I've been here I've been hearing about that intersection and we do something about it so we're, we're to the point where it's going to get done. Um, in the future we'll be working on, uh, we got County Trunk OK from Camelot out that's in construction for 2012 out to the intersection and we work in a county trunk J in 2011 rebuilding from 32 out to Highland Road. So we got a lot of bigger stuff lined up for the for the future and uh, I don't have a lot, whole list of all the asphalt that we're going to be doing but there's uh, going to be a fair amount of that for 2010 also. Greg's been one of our shining stars on our management team whenever we bring in new blood and he is new blood even though it's been three years. Uh, it always brings a fresh perspective and Roger Lanning, his predecessor, did an excellent job as Highway Commissioner and Greg I think is taking it the next step and one of the things I mentioned earlier was the pressures we have on us as an organization to keep property taxes in check, to continue to provide excellent quality services but not raise those taxes. And when you have the challenges that we touched on earlier with whether it's salt going up or fuel going up or, or just wage and benefits going up, it's difficult to do that. And one of the reasons we've been successful the last three years in holding the line on property taxes and in fact reducing property taxes is because we've looked at some of our major departments and done an operational review. 
Uh, the highway department recently did one, and I know you're looking to reduce some staff, as you mentioned earlier, through attrition. And another thing recently you've been focusing on is whether or not we could consolidate a shed or two to garner some efficiencies and cost savings there. We only have a couple of minutes, but briefly touch on what your plans are there. We have a facility down in Adel that's one of our satellite sheds, that, um, and we also have one that's about five miles away in Cascade that we are looking to combine the equipment in men and move them to either our salt site facility, there's right off I-43 over to Cascade and closing that facility. It's probably not gonna happen this winter, but in spring we will be shutting that, that facility down. Um, we should be garnering the savings about $125,000 a year with labor and also not having to maintain and insure and, and, uh, and heat that building. So that is one of the things that we're looking at for 2010 to get that, uh, that facility closed. And I know that's not easy to do. Whenever it's changed, whether it's the highway department or any other, it's challenging. And the operational reviews have you know, brought in, a, again, another objective person, if you would, or team to look at our operations and make suggestions. And then ultimately, we, do, we look at that and make decisions. It's happened in the highway department. We saved literally millions of dollars by privatizing Sunny Ridge and consolidating our healthcare center to Rocky Knoll. We consolidated UW Extension with UW Sheboygan and this fine facility. They're tickled with their new uh, office here at UW Sheboygan. We consolidated our Health and Human Services Aging and Disability Resource Center, now in the Sheboygan Falls site, saving us about $200,000 a year. We consolidated our real property listing with our treasurer's office. And certainly, as Chairman Vandersteen knows, all of these steps have helped us, including the good work you've done at the Highway Department, to hold the line, in fact, provide some modest property tax relief. I think what we would all agree, though, is there may not be too many more of those opportunities ahead of us. We're all striving to continue to gain efficiencies and, and get creative, but at some point, when you have the pressures that we do financially, um, how long we'll be able to continue that track rec record, time will tell. Greg, we only have a minute left. Anything else you wanted to share or, or share with our viewers? Oh, I just want to wish everybody a very health, uh, healthy and happy holidays and uh, stay safe on the roads. We'll do the best we can to get you where you need to be. Thank you. Greg Schnell, Highway Commissioner. If you have any questions for the Highway Department, suggestions, constructive criticism, Greg's got thick skin and let me tell you, he does a fantastic job. Don't hesitate to contact Greg directly or one of his staff and, and certainly Mike and I are always open to suggestions for programs to focus on or any ideas you have on how your county government could be more effective. So until then, next month, our Land and Water Conservation Director, Pat Miles, will be with us to talk about the good work he's doing. And again, until then, have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, stay safe.